Hello everybody, it's Mike. Welcome back to the channel. I have a whole lot of content today because I know it's been a while since I've posted a video. Uh, I'd like to start off here in the garage where I've, you know, there used to be a train layout in here and I recently converted it to a workbench and shelves uh, to store some stuff, some G-gauge and some Halloween buildings as we get ready for Halloween season. Getting ready to build that layout. But let's talk about acquisitions and helping out a friend sell some of his stuff. Um, so not all of this is mine, although I've managed to acquire about 30 new locomotives uh, uh, plus some sets since last we talked. Um, so in helping out a friend here... Uh, you're going to see this locomotive sitting down on my train layout. Um, he has this for sale. Uh, so I'll be doing a listing for Facebook Marketplace. And I have to redo my listings. I've sold almost, uh, I don't know, 65, 70% of what I have listed right now. Um, and I don't have anything up right now for sale. I haven't since June. But I think some of my listings still save somewhere or something because people keep messaging me. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. There's a L5 Pennsylvania Proto 2. There's a Pennsylvania FF1. Um, uh, these are his. These are a F3 ABA uh, New York Central set. And these run very good. Uh, they're actually upgraded to Proto Sound 2 or 3 because uh, I've been running them with my remote. Um, let's see. The S2 switcher will be mine. This E5 electric here is uh, a cool piece. I don't think it's ever been run. Um, so EP5 electric, Proto Sound 2. Um, Yeah, it doesn't look like any wear on it at all. So that's his, and that will be up for sale. Um, The T1, it has an issue. I'm sending it back to him. This is his. I already sold my Proto 3 one. Um, this is his. This will be for sale when he gets it fixed. Um, so this will go back to him. It's in pretty good shape. I did look at it. Uh... I acquired some tin plate, conventional classic set. So I have this, uh, this is mine. This is one of the very first sets that I bought in O scale. This is a, uh, I guess they call them American Legacy. It's an MTH set. It's a remake of the New York Central Super Train, um, which is the Rail Chief Maroon Two Tone Cars. And Two of the cars, the the bottoms warped on them. And I had this for sale, but then I decided to bring it back from the shop where I had it for sale at. Um, and I found this set of cars, and I thought it would be the same road numbers as those, and it's not. So now do I debate that set of cars is perfect, but those cars are like in the 800s, and these cars are in the 700s. So... I don't know if I want to tear these apart or if I just live with the slightly bent bottoms on these. Anyway, um, let's go back to this. Uh, this is his engine, but this is going back. Uh, it has an issue that when you put it in reverse, it shuts down. So he needs to figure that out before I can sell that. Um, that's my new T1. That's my new Lion Master Challenger. My new Lion Master T1, um, uh, M1B, Pennsylvania Proto Sound 2, uh, GP30, uh, Pennsylvania, that's his engine, that will be up for sale, that's brand new in box. Uh, the R34 Subway set with the add on cars, I may end up buying that off of him. I have to open this up, I don't even know what it looks like. Um, then 
I got the Flying Yankee here. Uh, Premier Specialty uh, Red Arrow Lines with Protosound 3. Uh, Milwaukee Road. This is my new set here. This is four cars in the Station Sounds Diner with two two diesels. That was brand new in box. Um, let's see. Oh, the the Chicago and Alton MPC and the Southern MPC set. So steam locomotive with cars. So I've gotten a lot of new stuff, and I have two friends that are selling their collections that instead of like turning them over to auction houses for pennies on a dollar um i'm gonna help them move some of their stuff and see how that works as long as it doesn't become too big of a headache because neither one of them use any paypal or uh they don't even use facebook they're you know both 80 year old guys or 80 years old plus um so you don't do anything like this so um i'll have to figure that one out on how to help all right then uh i've been toying with selling this might be part of my next listing but i do have someone already interested in these uh black bonnet santa fe stuff i am keeping santa fe in my road but I've already sold off a lot of my black bonnet stuff. Um, you know, it's just at one point I thought that was super important to have. But when I noticed I never ever use it, I'm like, eh, I don't need to keep it. Cool looking stuff for sure. And I know it's ultra popular. So I knew that stuff would sell fast as soon as I uh, decided to start parting with some of it. All right. So down here, these are that, they're originally PS1s. Um, the only flaw I can find on them is this diaphragm is a little funky. Uh, but everything else, I mean, the locomotives are beautiful and they run great. Uh, we have to come up with a price on these since they're upgraded to Protosound 2. And there's two powers and a uh, non-powered unit here. So that's one of the things that will be for sale. Um, let's see. Oh, there's, I got a new New York Central PS3 engine, uh, and the matching Missouri Pacific there, Proto 3, little 060 switchers. So that's new. Uh, the Williams Blue Goose. Again, I am in Christmas mode, thinking Christmas layout and Halloween layout and acquired six MTH aluminum passenger cars that the paint happens to match like perfectly to the Williams. Like how much closer can you get? That's like amazing at how good they did. Um, then we're going to talk about these locomotives here in a minute. They're all on the track. And here's the FF1. This thing is really cool. When you shift directions, the pantographs change up and down automatically. That's really cool. This is my second time having an L5. You've probably seen my other one in videos over on that wall when it used to be all Pennsylvania. And I sold that one to my friend Tom. So we got the L5 here. Um, uh, man, that's that wall is pretty similar to what it's been in the past. So anyway, enough about all this stuff. Let's check out some trains running and tell you a story about this train here, this locomotive, and its broken part that uh, I've been able to fix with super glue.
So, is super glue strong enough to bond metal? Well, this is the locomotive, and it's loud. Let's blow to a whistle. Anyway, this T1 is a Lionel from the year 2000, and it needed a traction tire change because it had never been run. And as uh, I was working with my friend selling it to me, trying to change a traction tire, uh, this bolt was seized up to the wheel and it brought off a chunk of the wheel instead of unscrewing out of the wheel. Man, let me shut this down. So, talk about tragic. I looked up on Lionel's parts list and you could not buy a single wheel. All you could buy was an entire drive block and that was unavailable. The drive block was $120. I would have sprung for that because uh, he definitely gave me a good deal on this locomotive after seeing what happened. I took a chance because it was a good deal saying I could fix it. I thought about using JB Weld if super glue didn't work, but I guess there were enough rigid edges and I was able to fit it back into the hole good and super glued it, let it sit overnight. And now Christian and I have about three hours of runtime on this locomotive, just waiting for that to give because you wouldn't think that would be strong enough with all the moving, all the motion in that area. But it was definitely strong enough to hold it. And I guess now I know the answer. If it ever does come loose, uh, I could try some JB Weld or um, just put more super glue on it. Super impressive. So, yeah, one of a, a buyer's worst nightmares happened. And... Um, I was able to, to, you know, being the buyer, uh, negotiate a good deal on this guy and took the chance, fixed it, and now it's a good runner. I sold my last one of these to my now friend, Austin Inns. You probably see his post on Popso Scale and other train groups. He runs his locomotive like this quite a bit. Um, I think it's one of his favorites for sure. So that is my piece on will super glue actually hold up as a fix on a metal on metal issue. All right, let's talk Lion Master. How many out, out there already have Lion Master locomotives by Lionel? This guy has never owned one until now. And, uh, you know, a little history on why Lion Master for me. I build a Christmas and Halloween layout. And I usually use 036 or uh, 031 Tubular or 042 Atlas, uh, you know, track on all of my holiday layouts. And I don't have any really big, cool steam engines. In the past, I've had Rail Kings, and as I started getting into more of the standard O size, the larger size, I started selling off a lot of those. And um, now I've got a new, a renewed interest in them. And so I started hunting for, you know, some steam engines that were compatible with O31, and I found these two. So ironically enough, there's a Lion Master T1. Um, you know, this guy really impressed. Uh, here's its big brother. Uh, or I shouldn't, yeah, I'd definitely say big older brother. Because this coming from 2000 didn't have any Odyssey speed control in it. And I'll probably end up putting an electronic railroad uh, control in it to try to maintain speeds. We shall see. Um, so this does have Odyssey, 
and the smoke works really well. And I actually really like how this fits the track and the curves. It looks really good going around the curves because uh, the engine's definitely smaller and has that capability for a tighter curve. But when you put it on an 081, it looks at home. And same story for this Lion Master Delaware and Hudson uh, Challenger. I mean, this guy looks amazing. This is on, this goes through a 054 turn inside my tunnel there. You don't see it. Uh, on the outside here, it comes down the, the incline on like 063 and um, this is 072. So when you see it running around the track, it looks at home. Like there's not a lot of articulation that happens and most of the articulation happens at the rear truck. You know, much like the K-Line semi-scale big boy um, and the K-Line Virginian and CNO Alleghenies uh, that are nice looking engines too. But I am really impressed with the Lion Masters. They run well. They were super easy to change attraction tires on. Um, and they smoke well. So I'll get them running around the layout with this T1 here in a second so you can check them out going through the curves and whatnot. But I will say uh, I'm excited to have some Lion Master in my collection at this point because it does just a great job on a smaller layout like this. My layout only being 21 and a half by eight, um, they look at home. 